Aortic dissection is the most common aortic condition requiring urgent surgical therapy. And we're here to talk about endovascular repair of type B aortic dissections. Instead, XL, and this is uh, Dr. Christoph Niepadnaber, excuse me, who is the head of the Department of uh, Cardiology at the University of Rostock in Germany. Now, this is from Jack Interventions, where the registry data is from, but you also had a similar publication also, correct? Yes, so we have actually two publications in the same month. The before mentioned registry data that appeared in Jack Intervention, comparing uh, endovascularly treated patients with type B dissection versus conventional medical management, and they showed a benefit, an edge, beyond two years of follow-up, with a significant advantage for those patients that underwent stenting. And in the same month, in the uh, circulation intervention issue on August 6, I believe, we showed a uh, similar data based on a, a comparison, a, a randomized comparison, a study, the so-called instead excel study, excel for extended lengths of follow-up for patients undergoing endovascular treatment in a stable condition of type B dissection. Now this has been a tough group of people to treat, correct? That's right. The, pati the patients which, which suffer from type B dissection are usually treat it for complications early on. This is an accepted concept, even without level one data. However, those patients that survive the initial impact of dissection and are left alone on medication are not very well taken care of. And we randomized these patients in patients that went, underwent stenting or elective endovascular treatment or just medical management. And it, sh it showed that these patients, initially to considered to be stable or uncomplicated, eventually turned out to show complications later on that could have been prevented by early stenting. So the stented group, the endovascularly treated group, benefited beyond two years of follow-up, similar to the registry data, with a clear, significantly, uh, a significant advantage for those patients that underwent endovascular repair. So who are these patients specifically that you would recommend? These are the patients that usually are left alone after the diagnosis of type B dissection under medical management. Usually what people do today is we keep blood pressure low and see this patient eventually once or twice every so often and basically follow, do not follow them properly. We took these patients and submitted them to stenting in a randomized fashion and eventually after five years of follow-up we could show that beyond two years of follow-up the two curves uh, separate in, uh, with an advantage for those people that were repaired by endovascular repair initially. Clinically speaking, what is the lesson here for interventionalists? I mean, how do you determine that what you need to do and when? Right. The current belief that you should treat only patients with complications such as small perfusion or imminent rupture has to be corrected. The lesson that we learned is that we should even stand patients that do not show these critical small perfusion symptoms, but also patients that are clinically silent but show evidence of progression in terms of expansion or other silent changes. Patients that are considered to be uncomplica uncomplicated but in fact do show complications later on. These patients, if anatomically feasible and suitable, should undergo endovascular stenting in an experience center to prevent later complications. And once they're stented, what kind of follow-up is necessary? Uh, we recommend a follow-up CT image or any kind of image after three months and then on an annual basis every year. They should be seen clinically and with an imaging session. So you think this is a, a good advance for these patients? Yeah, I think you can not only control these patients and keep them under surveillance, but also pick up later complications that might show up and are easily to be repaired. And the procedure isn't that difficult? No, in experienced hands with a selection of uh, stents and the, the appropriate endovascular materials, you can safely treat these patients, I think. So if you want to take a look at the registry data, you look at Jack Interventions, and it is in the uh, August issue. And the clinical data is in what publication? This is in uh, Circulation Intervention in August 2013. Okay. I wanted him to say that. For, uh, for Jack and for uh, CardioSource World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.